Hello, thank you for clicking on this video. As quickly as I possibly can, I am gonna show you how to convert pretty much any video file to any other video file on Windows using FFmpeg. Now, FFmpeg is a command line tool, but don't freak out just yet. It's actually really easy to use. There's loads of documentation online on how to use it. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install it, how to run various basic commands, and also how to do batch processing with it so you can process multiple files at the same time. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you're gonna to want to do is head across to ffmpeg.org and press download and then go for Windows and we want, uh, I'm just gonna go for the top option here and then we want a release build and we want uh, the zip version unless you already have 7zip 7, 7 installed, just go for the zip version and we're just gonna wait for that to download. Unlike most programs uh, on Windows, this doesn't come with an installer, so it's not gonna install itself. You have to do that yourself. So um, what we're first gonna do is just extract this zip file. So we've got access to the contents. There we go. And then you can see inside this zip file, we've got a, a bin folder, and these are the actual executables that we need. And there's also like documentation here, which you can also find online um, and some other stuff. So do have a read of that when you first download it. For right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that somewhere useful, somewhere that I'm gonna remember. Um, for me, I like putting it in my program files folder, but you could uh, put this anywhere you like really. Um, so I'll just do that. So you can see I've already got a top level folder called FFmpeg. I'm gonna go in there. I've already got a different version installed. I'm just gonna um, paste in this new version that I've got here. So the next thing we're gonna to want to do is make this file accessible from the command line. So the way that we do that is we add it to the Windows path variable. Hit the Windows key to bring up your Windows menu and then start typing in the word path. This will bring up this option for edit environment variables for your account. If you click on that, you can then go to the path variable here, press edit and you can then add a new path. So we're gonna add a path that points to this uh, bin folder that we just pasted in. So I'm gonna copy that path. I'm gonna go back to my settings and I'm gonna add a new and I'm gonna paste that path in. And that's it, press okay. So we've copied our FFmpeg executable into a folder of our choosing. We've set a path variable to point to that executable. That means that now we can open our command prompt and access FFmpeg from anywhere in the system. So if we hit the Windows key and type in CMD and then press enter, that'll open the command prompt, the Windows command prompt. And now we can type in FFmpeg and hit enter. And if it's worked, you should see something like this. So you should see uh, a list of commands and the prompt to try out the help command, which we can do. That will give us a list of all of the commands that FFmpeg is capable of doing. Right, so we have FFmpeg installed and now we're gonna use it. So the first thing you want to do is find a folder with some video files in it. So here I've got a video file I recorded earlier this week of my brother doing some kayaking. Um, so this was recorded on a GoPro. Uh, you know, not much to say about the footage. If you want to watch his videos, head over to Matt Brook Kayaking, Matthew Brook Kayaking on YouTube. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, plug over. Um, so what we're going to do with this video file, we can do a few different things with it. In fact, with FFmpeg, the possibilities are endless, but I'm just going to demonstrate a few things. So here I've got a video file, which I would like to convert to .mov format. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna click in the uh, address bar in Windows Explorer and type CMD and hit enter. And that's gonna open up my command prompt at the current directory. So we've got, we're in C temp and that's our current directory. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a copy of this file name and then I'm gonna type in ffmpeg tac i or dash i minus i and that means input. So that's how my input file. I'm now gonna paste uh, the name of my input file. And then I'm going to give a name for my output file. In this case, I want to convert from .mp4 to .mov. So I'm gonna change that output file name to .mov. And 
I don't need to put in anything else. I, I could, there are more parameters I could set, but by default, um, this is just going to convert the files automatically using a lossy compression. So at the end of this, what we're gonna see is that my new file is actually smaller than my original file because um, it has thrown away some information. However, actually when you compare the files side by side, the default settings here um, generally mean that visually you won't notice a difference unless you ran this over and over again on the same file and kept compressing it uh, you won't you, you probably won't see the difference um, other than the fact that it's a lot smaller which is quite useful for my hard drive space so um, let's just have a look at that so the original video here obviously with the YouTube compression added on top of this you're really not going to see the difference and the second video there okay so that's just one example I'm now going to move on to a few different examples of ways that you can use FFmpeg to convert files uh, or to perform different actions on different video files so here's a cool command if you've got a video file but you don't want the audio to be kept so you want to throw away the audio for example, uh, you've recorded a video and you want to send it to someone, but there's some audio in the background that you don't want them to hear and you just want them to see the video portion of it. You can strip all of the audio and all of the metadata out of the file and just keep the video. So to do that, you use this command. So like before, we've got the, the dash I and then the name of the input file. And then if you type dash V codec copy dash AN and then the name of the output file, then that is going to remove all of the audio from the original file and give you a new file with no audio. So let's just have a look at that. So in the original file, you can see I've got audio and in the new file that it created, I've got the same video, but I've got no audio. This next command I'm gonna show you is really useful if you just wanna make a video file size like a lot smaller. Um, so this allows you to perform a lossy compression, so the quality is going to suffer a bit, but it will mean that your file size can, can really dramatically reduce, um, particularly if you've got some very high bitrate uh, video. So with this command, what you're going to uh, do is you're going to put your input file in as you did before, and you can choose either um, 264 or 265 encoding. Uh, 265 is a newer codec um, and is generally quite well supported these days. But um, if the th person you're sending this to for some reason can't open it, you might need to try 264 uh, encoding. And uh, then these two parameters here affect how long it takes to encode and uh, the quality of the final render, how much compression is applied. So the higher your CRF number, the more compression it applies and the more artifacts you're gonna start to see. And then the um, preset here affects how quickly it's going to um, work through your footage and how much effort it's going to go to to try and reduce your file size. So the slower you let it run, the smaller your file size. That makes sense? I hope so. If not, have a look at the documentation because um, this documentation is super helpful and it just talks you through what all the different parameters mean and... Uh, yeah, explains how to use it. So let's just hit run on that. So now that that's complete, you can see the file that it created is absolutely tiny compared to the original. Um, it's compressed it by, I mean, what, nearly like a hundred times, but uh, the quality has suffered quite a bit. So uh, you can probably see this is really blocky and uh, smushy. But if that's what you need for making a really small file that you can maybe send to someone over the internet, then uh, this might be a useful thing for you. And obviously you can tweak how much compression is applied by modifying this CRF value. Like the value I've put in here is like stupid high um, because I just wanted to show the effect. But um, normally you'd put this somewhere around the sort of 28 mark and that would give you a nice balance of reduced file size but without uh, completely destroying the file. So the last command that I want to show in this video is for downscaling footage. So say you had a 4K video that you wanted to downscale to HD or a HD video you wanted to downscale to 720p. You can use this command. So in this case, I'm downscaling to 720p. So I enter in dash VF for filter and then scale. And 
I only need to specify one of the dimensions. So this is the width by the height. So I'm just specifying the height of 720 and I put a minus one in so that it will automatically maintain the same aspect ratio as the original footage and just scale it down until the height uh, is 720. So if we hit enter on that, should run pretty quickly. Now, if we look at the original file, you can see that this is 1920 by 1080, so HD footage. And my new file, now that that's finished, is 1280 by 720, which are the dimensions of 720p footage. So before I move on to the next section, the last thing to say is that if you uh, need to perform some sort of conversion on your video file, and I haven't already explained uh, the conversion that you want to do, head on over to ffmpeg.org and look at their documentation there because that's really rather good. Or if you can't find what you're looking for there, just Google for FFmpeg and then the thing you want to try and do to your video because uh, there's a good chance that someone has done it before. So now you know how to convert files using FFmpeg, but what if you have a whole folder full of files and you want to convert all of them in the same way and you don't want to have to type in that command over and over again? Well, this is where the power of the command line really comes into its own. In Windows, you can create these things called batch files, which is basically just a file that contains a list of commands that you want to run on the command line. And some of the really powerful features of that is that you can run uh, what's called a for loop. So it will iterate over all of the files in your folder and perform the same action on all of them. So in this example, I've created this file and what this is going to do is it's going to look for all of the files in the current folder, any of the ones that match this criteria, so any files that have a .mp4 extension, it's going to run this command. So this is the same command that I showed earlier for removing the audio from a file, except instead of uh, passing in fixed names, I'm passing in this special variable, which is... Uh, provided by the for loop, which is the name of the current file that it's looking at as it iterates through the folder. So this allows me to automatically convert all the files in this folder. So if I run this, it's going to fly through. And now I've got a new version of each file that has the no audio tag on the end of it. And if we listen to uh, our file, so let's just go back to the original file that we were looking at before. So this one has audio and this version of it has no audio. Isn't that nice? So you can use this technique to run any FFM, FFmpeg command that you want to on any number of files. Obviously it will take longer depending on the command and the number of files that you need to convert, um, but that is a really powerful tool to convert multiple files all at the same time. Check out the description to find links to where you can download these batch files, as well as links to further documentation. If you found this video useful, please do consider giving it a like and maybe even subscribing to my channel. And uh, do also comment and let me know um, what other commands you'd like to see or if there's anything you'd like to know about FFmpeg. Thank you for watching.